Hi, it's the June Power Query Challenge. And thanks once again to everybody who submitted their solutions to this problem. Thanks to Oscar for actually asking this question and giving me the idea um, of this type of data challenge. Um, amazing submissions from Bhaskar, Khaled, uh, John Douglas, Brian, Eric Svensson, Chandeep, all sorts of people. Who else was in here? Um, we've got Demetrius, we've got Peter, Ian, uh, Melanie Braden, okay, all sorts of people. So thank you to everybody who submitted. Everybody's solutions will be in the folder that I'll put a link to in the show notes. I'll show you a couple of ways of doing each part of this challenge because there's all sorts of ways of doing these things. Let's go. So here's the challenge. And it, it really started with sort of this first sort of question here from Oscar Williams um, on the YouTube channel. Um, you know, the feedback form you do in Excel forms or something, there's multiple options. And you need to split these into a column for true and falses. So just like this, we need option one, who said yes or no, option two, who marked it, option three. Okay, so they're grouped together like this. So that presents a bit of a challenge. And then I thought I'd chuck a couple of other things in there. So we always want to get rid of any columns that begin with sys. And then essentially these names have got two or three spaces. Um, but they could have four, five, six potentially. So we'll address these challenges as we're there. OK, so this was the challenge. I'll show you how I'd approach it and how other people have approached it and take a look at other people's solutions. Brilliant. All of them. So here we go. I'm going to right click in this table and say get data from table slash range. Or you go up to data. OK, and you click on from table slash range. So that's the approach. OK. And then we're into Power Query. And let me just zoom in a little bit. OK. So let's deal with the sys columns first. Right? Get rid of the columns you don't need. Um, now, there's a couple of ways of doing this, but I think this is probably the, the unanimous way that people sort of, um, or the most common way people address this. What we want to do is, if we ref delete these two columns, right click, remove columns, okay, you have this table remove columns and then this little list. So the thing in the curly brackets is a list with the names, but we just want any name that's going to begin with sys. So what we could do is this. We actually can add a function, or sorry, add a new new step, clicking on the FX. Um, and actually, let me just go back a step. Let me delete that change type, because I don't want to refer to the columns anyway. So here we go. We start with a source step. We click on the uh, FX button to add a new step. There it is. OK, and there's the source it's referring to. and. We're just going to do table dot column names just to grab a list of column names. So table column C N for table column names. There we go. Tab. Remember, never press the dot. The dot just stuffs things up. So never press the dot. Then we can open up the bracket and say from your source. And let me close the bracket. And if I press enter, we then simply got a list of the column names. Beautiful. OK, then I want to basically only grab these two. So this ones that begin with sys. Now, a couple of people and I may not have been sort of clear in my instructions, and this could work in certain scenarios, um, went for the went for this option. Check this out. You can just use list dot find. So if I put a little bracket there so we don't accidentally overwrite it, you can do list find, see list find text, okay, so, and then comma, and then you can search for the word sys. Okay, that then gives you just those items. However, it is sort of in this case, um, quite case sensitive. And that will find 
you know, if the word is cis partway through or so. It's not a bad solution, okay? But maybe for safety purposes, this next one is a, a little bit better. So there's a couple of other ways of doing this. One way is to turn this to a table. Okay, this is the sort of non-formulary um, way. And then you can just filter this, okay? The text filter begins with, and you can just say sys. Don't think there's an advanced, no, there isn't anything under there. Okay, so you just go with, like this, and then you can turn that back into a list, okay? You can even go drill down, turn it back into a list. Okay, so there's one way of doing it. Um, check this out. Each text dot starts with column one, sys, okay? Table dot select rows. So you could, if you wanted to, avoid some of these bits and pieces. Okay, let's go back. And quite a few people did it this way. They didn't convert it to a table. They just started with this and they used list.select. So list, and again, never type the dot. Okay, list select. The dot just messes things up. Um, comma. So you can say, right, I want to select the rows, each, going down each row and grabbing everything where the text starts with. So text starts with, okay, so which bit of text? Well, that's where you put this underscore that represents each item. Okay, so where that starts with sys. Okay, so you can do it this way, uh, bracket on the end. Saves you turn it into a table. It might be fractionally quicker. I quite like the table way because it's nice and obvious, but this is pretty cool. Now, a couple of people, um, I think Chandeep and who else? Uh, quite a few people actually, including uh, the first one I saw who did this was Steve, Steve Bateman, okay, was what if it's lowercase sis? Like quite a few people put in capitals, you know, capitalize the list before they did it and try to rethink about this potentially happening. But there's a nice little feature in here. Check it out in text starts with comma. Okay, extra little comma, optional parameter comparer as nullable function. Now, come on Power Query team, please make these things more humanly understandable. Who knows what that means? Okay, but what it can do is this. You can type in, start typing com, comparer.ordinal, ignore case. Okay, enter, beautiful. So there's the columns I wanna remove. Right, so then what I can do is click on the FX, and change this back to source. So there's the sys calls to remove. Okay, change this back to source. Oh, I just renamed that. Um, and just manually get rid of these two. Right click, remove columns. Quite a few people did it the other way around. They did the keep columns and worked out the, the list using a not function. Um, and then just replace this, this little list the thing in curly brackets, you replace that with sys calls to remove. Beautiful, press enter, it still works because it's the same thing. And then I actually don't need to refer to custom one. I could refer straight to the source step. Okay, so tidy my code up a little bit, get rid of my custom one, delete. All right, so that's removed the sys calls. Right, next one. Couple of ways of getting rid of these leading sp these double, triple spaces. Because you can't do right click replace. Well, you can, but you have to do it a few times and you can't really guarantee, you know, how many spaces you're gonna get rid of. A um, Couple of different approaches. I quite like this one. You know, I'm just gonna go right click, um, transform trim, just to make sure I've got rid of any leading spaces. Okay. Then I'm gonna go, but that doesn't get rid of any double spaces in the middle. It gets rid of leading and trailing. Then I'm gonna go right click, split column by delimiter, okay, using a space at the leftmost, so the very first space it comes across. Then I'm going to right click on here, transform and trim again to get rid of the spaces. Probably can just get away with that column, to be honest. And then I merge them back together. So quite a few people did it this way. Uh, right click, merge columns, using a space and call it name. 
Okay, there were a few other techniques that people used. Um, one nice one was a little function that a couple of people used. So I don't know where everyone, because they were exactly the same functions. So Demetrius and uh, Khaled, okay, uh, used this little function. Let me show you. I'll grab it now. And I'll create this new function. So right click, new query, other sources, blank query. I add that to my quick access toolbar. Okay, right click, add the quick access toolbar. So it's up here. So blank query. And let me do the advanced editor. So let me paste this here and then zoom in. Okay, click in. So what's this doing? Right, well, what this function does is grabs a piece of text or you pass a piece of text to it. It then splits the text apart using a space and it splits into a list. Text.split creates a list from like a sentence, it splits all the words into separate elements or whatever it might be. So this is splitting everything at every space. So if there are four spaces, there'd be four blank rows and then the words after it. Then you're using list.select again on each item where it doesn't equal blank. So you're filtering out all the blanks. So you've only got the words and then you're combining those words together with a space in between. Beautiful. All right, so we click done. We can call this um, whatever we want to do. I call mine FX trim. So go back, if I go back here, if I were to sort of tidy this up, this is the, let me go back a step. Okay, let's go back to here. Okay, and I could just add a column, invoke custom function. Okay, are you sure on the insert? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This whatever it is, this is the clean name. And the function is FX trim. And I want to pass it as part of the sort of that text bit that it asks for. Name with double or triple space. Okay, and that's it, fixed up. Which is pretty cool. Okay. I'm just going to delete that though. I don't really need it. But I like that approach too. Right, and I'm sure that's really reusable as well. So it's a nice little function to have in your back pocket. Okay, last one, splitting this apart. A couple of main ways people did this. First way was split, pivot, and the other way was condition was columns, for um, using text contains. Let me show you both ways. So here we go. We right click, split column by delimiter at each occurrence of the semicolon. And importantly, split it into rows because then it's dynamic in terms of the number. Right, click OK. Awesome. Get rid of the spaces. So filter out the blanks. Okay, then you can add a column. It could be anything. So I'm just gonna go add an index column. Okay. And then I want to pivot this. So if I go to the transform tab, this is highlighted. Okay, that's the one I want the columns to be. So you highlight the one you want to be the column names. You go to pivot column. And it says use the names in multi response question to create a new column, multi response question. Yep. And then the values are going to come from the index. And you can just change this advanced option, something like count. And you click OK and you get noughts, zeros, and ones. And then here's a little trick. Noughts is actually false. Ones are trues. So if you highlight all these, keep your finger on shift, click on that little decimal, pick true, false. There you go. So that's one way of doing it, right? Another way. Let me show the other way. Let me just delete this. And delete this. Oh, I should have just done delete till end. There we go. Okay, the other way is to add a custom column called option one. And then basically you say uh, text contains, double click on the word or the column name, sorry, comma, and whatever you want to check for, option one. And then that basically results in a true false. 
because it contains option one, it's true. This one doesn't contain option one, so it's false. And then essentially you just repeat that formula for option two, option three, and you've got the answer. So a different approach. But I do want to call out Eric Svensson, Power Query, Power Query Wiz. Um, check this out. So here's Eric's combined step, which is pretty funky, okay? He's gone the table.add column um, called custom, here it is. And then he's used an each, and he's just combined them all into one step, okay? Which is pretty fancy. It's a nice Eric, nice work. And then you just expand this out. Option one, two, three. Oops, sorry. And then you got it. Beautiful. So there we go. All sorts of options. Thanks for everyone for taking part. Hope people have learned a few little tricks there. Um, share this channel with others. Let people know about it. Okay. Hope you enjoy it. Um, love getting your feedback. Let me know what you think and I'll catch you later.